Yo, what up guys, what is going on? In this video today, I have something very special for you. The title of today's video is How to Befriend a Celebrity. My mentor in 2013 created this and I want to continue the legacy. There is 10 steps to be able to do this and I'm gonna tell you how it correlates directly to how to make new friends, how to solidify more dates with more potential people that you're interested in, as well as uh, you know, increasing your social circle and gaining more network connections for your business. So let's get into it today. I'm super excited and uh, in these 10 steps, I'm going to show you how they impacted my life with stories from my life. And you'll be able to see classic examples of how I tell you the rule and how it applies directly. So let's get into it. So this topic may be of little interest to a lot of people, but it's really, really interesting the commonalities between how to befriend a celebrity and how to befriend anybody. It says here in the article, so examining how to befriend celebrities is a way to get outside the box and develop better social calibration on how to get people into your life, whether that's girls that you're interested or guys if you're a girl, whether that's new friends, whether that's business connections, this is gonna help. Let's get to the number one myth of the video and it goes here, most people assume that you have to be a celebrity in order to befriend a celebrity and that is simply not true. In fact, rather, celebrities have a shortage of cool people or cool friends with an overabundance of people wanting something from them. So either a photograph, wanting just their time, their energy, wanting them to put on the facade of the character that that person had seen them in the movies or on a song. They want them to be the character or be the fantasy that these people you know, had in their minds of this person. And when they do not live up to it, not only is it a lot of pressure to just, you know, stand to fulfill everyone's fantasy of who you are. The ultimate irony, as it says here, of people who can't be cool is the celebrity realizes they're more or less a regular person. And that person places all this value on them is bizarre. They don't want to have this effect on people. So it's really interesting that, you know, it states from the 2013, it's very, very similar today that celebrities, I don't think actually want to cause people to have anxiety or not be able to talk to them, not be the authentic version of them. They don't like this. And it goes on, human tendency equals everyone in life just wants what they want. Everyone's favorite topic is themselves and analyzing everything through a lens of how does this affect or relate to me? If you are talking to a celebrity, you have to beat this human tendency in yourself and consider how they are experiencing you. It's not just all me, 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 me and my experience, but rather how to relate to another person. Rule number one is be cool about who they are and what they do. Most people are either gushing fans or they actually insult the person, which is crazy when they first meet them, or they pretend to be above kind of like the gimmick of the celebrity. They pretend like, oh, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't, like, I don't think they're above me and all this. Thing. And a lot of the time, this is uh, this is false. And, and if not, they're actually more intimidated by the person because they're trying to be cool or trying to be this person that doesn't think this other person is cool. And a lot of time, really all you have to do is acknowledge a lot of what they do. Acknowledge that if they're a celebrity and they do cool stuff, understand that they do cool stuff but move on from that topic don't stick on a topic or don't stick on that like oh my god you're in this you're in this you're in this you know they are a regular person with regular things and they might have just done that one thing but that's not who they are as a person in the article it says uh i like i like personally to be fans of people i've taken you know eckhart tolle seminars anthony robin programs and I'm a majority of a fanboy of these people. At the same time, I understand the division of roles and I don't personally want to become friends with these people because I want them to stay as teachers in my life. We all know that a friend is a different type of chemistry, right? So you know that you have jokes back and forth, you might send memes back and forth, you tell each other, you confide in each other the problems or things that you're experiencing and it goes beyond just, you know, meeting them for one time or just, you know, acknowledging them for what they do. Now, you can't also be fans of these people at the same time. There's a thing called a hybrid friendship and that doesn't exist. You cannot be a friend of this person, a best friend of this person, and be a gushing fan at the same time. You're either one or the other with that. So an example is like you meet someone and you might like what they do. You might have this idea of like, oh, they're so awesome. And you get to know them and you get to meet them. You can't continue to be that gushing fan and be their best friend and confide all their problems and insecurities and all these things. You either have to choose to be their friend or their uh, their fan, let's just say. So rule number two is be pure positive and emotionally self-sufficient. So this person in light is not someone that you can emotionally dump all your baggage on. 
You know, people go out and socialize to have fun. And a lot of the time, they've already got enough going on in their own life. They've only got, already got, as it says in here, enough reality in their own lives. Maybe they've got, what, you know, stalkers. Maybe they've got people after them. Maybe they've got, um, you know, so many different daily activities that they have to do and so much emotional other crap that the magazines are telling about. So they've already got their own stuff in their life. So if you're coming at this person and now you're putting all your baggage onto them, just like a friend, just like an emotional, like, you know, a date, let's just say you're not unleashing all of your emotions on this other person. They're not there for you to do that at all. And there's other people in your life, like psychologists you could go to, you could go to a bunch of other things. There's a lot of call helplines that you can go to, to emotionally dump all your baggage on. But this person or these people in general are not the type of person to do that. I realize that the default of many people is to be negative. Since most people in general are negative, learning to control this in yourself, learning how to control this negative or being able to dump a lot of stuff onto people, being able to control that before you even try to befriend anyone in general. This is not just for a celebrity, this is anyone in general. So while it may be authentic, say if you're in a mood where you are feeling down or are feeling negative, it may be authentic to be that emotion. I talk about being the authentic person, but if you are feeling negative or feeling down, how do you not be like that? And it's about managing one's life so that you don't get into those situations. So in the thing it says, it's important to manage your life effectively enough that you are actually able to enjoy a night out or enjoy meeting people without feeling these type of emotions. Say you're feeling down or depressed or anything like that. You gotta manage your life so that you're not inflicting all those emotions that you're feeling onto other people. Number three, be financially self-sufficient and eliminate all envy from your life. So if you're hanging out with someone successful and they, you know, they say, hey, we should go here, hey, we should go there, and uh, we should go to this restaurant, it's kind of cool, and, and you do, really offer to pay for your portion, whether they say, let's go here and you, you should offer or be financially free enough so that you can pay for your portion and not relying on anyone else. A lot of the time we talk about how we, if we are getting value, so this person is inviting us to go here and here, or you know, these other people are inviting us here and here, and then we're relying on them to pay for us or them to do things or pick us up, you know, that is not offering value as a person. You're asking people to give you things, give you this, give you that. So in a, a type of person like this, they're very, very sensitive about all these kind of things. So at the same time, if they do pay, say if someone does pay for you, you don't be obnoxious because it comes off very petty and very kind of paranoid at the same time. You just say thank you very much. You appreciate everything they've done for you. And you're just very sincere in, in thanking them for what they've done. You know, just like you would any other person, someone does something nice for you, you're just very appreciative of what they've done. The last bit of that is, you know, they may in, they may invite you to different places where you not, might not be able to go. It might not be your financial lane, let's just say. They want to go here and it's, you know, the starting thing is like $5,000, $10,000. And, and it's not, not a time to spew negativity about not being able to go like that or not being able to do everything with them. Because there's going to be areas where they are, you know, in a, finan a bigger financial lane than you. They're on a different sort of um, planet than you or they might be very very similar but it's never a time to spew hate or negativity about something that you can't do like you know let's go to this restaurant and you're like oh no i hate that you know i got bad i got food poisoning from that uh, you know it sucks and it's never a time to do any of that so simply if you're in a, fi a different financial lane to them you simply just say you can't go and it's like oh well i'll catch you on another time and you may get there eventually it's not as if you won't get there so you know bide your time increase your finances definitely do be doing that as a person and uh, eventually you may be able to go to those places that those people are going to. So now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty parts of the laws and these, these you know, four coming up are very, very important and they relate a lot with meeting friends and meeting potential relationships you might get into, meeting girls if you're a guy or you know, guys if you're a girl or any sort of bit, uh, you know, any sort of ways that you like. And these really, really do help. I do say if you're meeting girls because it's much easier for me to say because that's what I'm into. So um, don't think I'm excluding you or anything like that. I'm just saying it's much easier to roll off the tongue. So number four is have your own life that's cool and that you like. So I'm going to repeat that again. Have your own life that's cool and that you like. I remember reading it. I was like, damn, that really, really hit me because it's like, I just remember it a lot. I remember a scenario. I was actually with my mentor who happened to actually make this. And we were at the front of Chipotle in Beverly Center in Los Angeles. And I met someone who is a big, big rapper. One of the biggest rappers in the world right now. I said to him, I was like, oh, I really like your music. I, I love when you drop this album. He dropped Shrem Life. 
and uh yeah i was like yo that's kind of cool you know like i love this thing and i was like what are you up to and i continued on from there so i already can you know use the first rule be okay with who they are and what they do so i acknowledge that i knew who he was i continued from there very quickly on to the next thing so the next thing that we were talking about was you know what are they up to tonight what's cool and they asked me what's cool on a tuesday night or something like that and i was just like oh we're thinking about going here and here and then it was a really really uh funny incident because now looking back i knew what i did wrong and I, I it just you know I didn't ask for a photo I didn't ask for anything I just kind of didn't facilitate that meetup with continuation you know because I had a cool life at that stage and because I had a cool life at that stage I could have invited that person into my life and be able to hang out with them and have cool experiences and I just didn't do that and I know now because you know there's going to be instances where this happens and you don't always perfectly get it in that instance i didn't say that i had a huge mansion and he could have shot music videos and everything like that i just didn't wasn't able to complete that and it was a mistake on my part going back to have your own life that's cool and that you like people who have cool lives want to be around other people that have cool lives this is what makes you an interesting person so if you have a cool life it doesn't mean you have to have millions of dollars doesn't happen to mean you have to live in the best places in the world it doesn't mean any of that but if you have a cool life cool to it to anyone else is just how much you love it really that's what it is so if you absolutely love your life sitting on the grass is a cool life you know sitting at the beach going this doing free activities working out in the park doing any you don't need the money to have a cool life you could have a skateboard you could live at a beach shack on the beach you could surf all day you could do all that and and you don't you know, might not go to work and, and that's your life and that's what you love or you can caravan around the world with no money or you can hike you know and and you hike mountains or you can you know party all day every day there's so many ways that you can live this life that you want but as long as you love it, as long as you like it. Be grounded in your own movie. It says, your reticular activation system is focused on your own reality and experiences of life. Not trying to live through someone else's reality and experiences of life. So you are the main character of your movie. It is your movie. And you're not placing anyone else as the main character of your movie. Because you wouldn't do that at all. Say if there was a movie and it said your name and your title. As if you would get someone else to play... The main character of your movie as if you'd get your best friend to be like oh he knows me better than anything no you know yourself better than anyone else in the world so number five is be non-needy and this one really really hit hit with me because uh you know there can be a lot of explaining to do in this one be the type of person who is open to meeting other cool new people but ultimately doesn't care whether you're friends with any one particular person or not so i made the series on tiktok how to befriend a celebrity and I reckon I've got about a thousand people commenting either uh, Niall Horan, Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber. And they particularly wanted this person. They want to be friends with this person. As it says here in rule number five, it's like you don't ultimately want this one particular person or not. And here's the reason. You don't target celebrities to meet them. Rather, you're open to it if you're having fun and hanging out. You don't care whether or not you hear from them because your own life is filled up with so much good stuff you don't notice. You have this life where you have so much going on, there are so many things happening that you're treating them ultimately like a normal person. And that comes down to the next rule. And, uh, and that's funny because, you know, when, when you're in your own reality, in your own life, you know, small things you can see get very petty. This person didn't text me back. This person did this. This person did that. And ultimately, if you're enjoying your life, none of that really matters in the end. You should be the type of person where if there's a dinner party or a big party, you don't proactively try to sit beside the cool people or where the energy is. Rather, be the person where even if you're surrounded by introverts, the cool end of the table is looking over at you to see why all the fun is at your table. So be this shining light that walks in the room, be this person. And it's not about being an introvert or extrovert, it's about expressing your energy, about making sure everyone's having a good time. Being this person that sort of breaks down social normities about, you know, oh, we can't talk over dinner, we can't do this, can't do that, and just be the fun energy that is being shone through the room if you're at a celebrity gathering just start having so much fun wherever you are that they start glancing over and want to be part of your group now this comes down to an example that on the weekend 
I was actually down at my local uh, local nightclub bar, whatever you want to call it. And what happened was the security were, you know, checking IDs and then there was another ID section. And then with these two celebrity friends that I had, very, very big over here in Australia, I actually got them to start IDing people's IDs as like a third checkpoint. Now, we're not security. We were just having fun. We were being in the moment, enjoying ourselves. And we were, as I said, not only was I bringing these celebrity dudes into my reality of just having the most fun possible, we were bringing everyone else in because they were starting to get recognized. But I didn't let them get sucked into the moment of being, oh, a photo with a fan. I let them be present into my reality of just having so much fun. The pressures were gone. You know, they weren't having to put on this facade. They were just being themselves and being happy and laughing and having this great time. And we were mucking around with other people, you know, with their IDs, maybe rejecting them. Oh, you can come through. But we were creating this, I was creating this ecosystem where they could be ultimately so relaxed in. And that comes down to the sixth rule, treat the person as a person and not an object. But don't be bragging to other people that you're friends with this person at all. Don't be bragging to other friends. Oh, I know this person. I know that person. Oh, I'm going to show them off on social media. I'm go- I can't wait to show the post that I have with this. But it's not about that. And another thing too, you're not asking for photos with them. You know, you're not asking to promote them all over social media. Make a choice. If you want a picture, that's fine. But you're becoming a fan of them. And as I said, rule number two, there's no hybrid friendships. You don't brag to your friend about another friend that you have that's not a celebrity, so don't do this to this person too. So it's not about taking photos, it's about being their actual friend. Comes down to rule number seven. Learn Stephen Covey's emotional bank account principle. A person's willingness to absorb negative energy, your negative energy, let's just say, be compliant to your requests and invest into you is based on how much good emotions you have been putting into that bank account, that emotional bank account between the two of you. You can withdraw from that bank account if there is only enough positive emotions that have been built up with that emotional bank account. Hitting people up with funny text messages, messages, emails, memes, phone calls, just checking in FaceTimes is a great way to build that emotional bank account up. Putting a lot of positive emotions before asking for anything in return or venting any negative emotions because they are sensitive people about people wanting things from them. So this is about giving value rather than taking value. So being this person that offers them value, maybe invites them to a bunch of places, that's giving value. Shoot some funny messages, you know, calls them just to check on them, that is giving value. Number eight is accept a person for their pros and their cons and don't expect them to be on. Everyone has good and bad qualities, it says. Celebrities can feel the judgment seething off most people who approach them. The persona that a celebrity brings to the public is their best self and requires rest to maintain. Nobody can be that charismatic or positive all of the time. And you can imagine that you can't be positive all of the time. You can't be this charismatic person. There's going to be times when you're not like that. You're not on, let's just say. You're not this person that everyone's known you as. You know, sometimes you're just a regular person. You're not this superhero figure that everyone has you on a pedestal. So most people demand that the celebrity or the person that is, you know, influential is that persona that they've seen them as in order to feel happy with the experience that they've received. They will shit talk them if they don't get what they want. And that's the crazy thing. I've seen this firsthand. I've literally seen this firsthand. So, you know, it'd be a thing like an example like here. But my example is that they met someone who's like, oh, I don't like him because of this, this, and this. He's an asshole, this, this. You meet the person. They're absolutely lovely. And whether this person didn't live up to this other person's image they had in their head, most likely. Don't expect these people to be on or don't expect everyone to be on. If they're a, you know, an influential person, don't expect them to be on ever. Just allow them to be who they are. And don't judge them for their pros or their cons or who they are. High profile people have too many of these experiences where people want things from them or they expect them to be this person and they're not. And uh, so a lot of time they find it a waste of time to befriend anyone. So if you come across in this way, it's no bueno, it's no go. It's like not what you want to be doing. Simply be non-judgmental 
accept the person for their pros and cons like any other human being you would meet. Number nine, understand the overwhelming busy nature of the person's life. You can understand that as a celebrity or anyone of high power or maybe you know, a politician, maybe a CEO, they have a lot of things in their life that you will never know about and they deal with them every single day and they don't want to burden you either. They're very socially sophisticated and socially aware, but they don't want to bother a person that might not know all of the ins and outs of their industry or their business. So they don't, they hold a lot back. So there's a lot going on and there's a lot going on in your life there's a lot going on in your friend's life but again you know just understand that you know these busy people you might hang out with them once twice a year they're so busy and it's not as if a lot of my mentors i hardly hang out with you know i might hit them up every couple of months but we still are in contact we are still talking but it's not it's going to be that tight-knit thing where it's your best friend or anything it may be who knows you may live with them you may become their assistant or something like that like the entourage boys but uh, a lot of the time it's like, you may only see them once or twice a year. And number 10, the last rule, be carefree, bring them into your world and provide a sanctuary from their concerns of life. This one is the most powerful one. So I'm gonna say it again, be carefree, bring them into your world and provide a sanctuary from their concerns of life. Now it goes to the next road. It says everyone is tired and scared. It doesn't matter how successful or famous you are. Be someone who doesn't judge them at all and has their own life under control and makes them feel safe and fun when they are around. Makes them feel that the world is light and an easy place for you even though there are many challenges that you face. Provide an escape from all the bullshit and idiots they deal with on an ongoing basis by providing authentic human interaction. And that is just fundamental. As you've seen in the 10 principles that we have here, it's basically treat them as if they are a normal person because again, they are a normal person. They might have a lot of influence, they might have a lot of fame, they might have a lot of things, but if you get a chance, you treat them just as if they're another human because they're dying for authentic human interaction. They're pretty much dying for it. They're pretty much seeking it. They just want it. And a lot of the time, they can't maybe allow themselves all of the time because they think this person wants something from me, that person wants something from me. And again, they're just... They're, they're, they're longing for it. It's really interesting to find there's a lot of comparisons between, you know, either finding potential partners in your life, finding potential friends, finding potential business partners, because all of this, it comes down to a couple of things. You see in this, it's always providing fun. It's always having fun with the person, being carefree, not judging the other person for who they are, not being a person that takes value, but instead gives value. Understanding the lesson is to handle your own shit realize that you know where people are coming from a lot of the time and understanding that there's a fun exchange you know you have value the other person has value as a person you're human beings you have value understand don't take don't dump all your emotional baggage onto them those 10 lessons you can apply to anybody in your life you can apply it to girls that you might be dating or girls that you might see you might be applying to business connections, friendships, celebrities, anything in life, any human communication, you can follow these 10 principles, but this is uh, something that my mentor made. I don't know if you'd like me putting it out, but you know, it's really interesting that I wanted to, I wanted to continue this on because I think these 10 rules are very, very fundamental. So hopefully you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video.